Okay, so uh, I did a little bit more tweaking around these holes here just to get the cape in. I made it a little too small, so I fixed that up so the cape goes in very good now. Uh, I went over the figure one more time. There was a couple spots that needed to have some A's works that Putty wouldn't really have fixed. So I did, gotta let that cure for the night. Uh, but I'm gonna do some wet sanding tomorrow and make sure everything's looking good. I'm setting everything up on blocks of wood and everything now so this way I can actually paint the item and mask and get everything going. But uh, since the figure and everything's got to kind of cure it for tonight, I can start working on the rock now. So what's going to happen now is we'll end this video and we're going to start the painting uh, series and we'll start off with the rock. The rock should go very fast. The bottom of the base is just going to be simple black piece, so I really don't need to go over that. We'll attach all those pieces and then we'll start working on the paint. Alright, we're going to start working on the rock. So uh, basically it's a moon rock. It's Supergirl just chilling on and hanging out while it's kind of like uh, going over Earth or hitting another asteroid. So we, we have to do the sparks and the red underneath of it, but for now we're just going to do the base uh, color. And uh, if you look at moon rocks at museums and stuff, they're like a really shiny black, uh, a lot of that type of moon rock. Um, but this is, you know, a uh, fantasy character. It's a Kryptonian and uh, DC comic books hanging out on a rock. So you don't have to make everything look realistic. You can have some fun with it. So uh, I'm going to go close to it, but we're going to add a little extra colors in it just to make it pop a little bit more. So uh, I have this paint bottle here, which I usually uh, use for any type of, uh, if I mix up a lot of color in my paint cups and I don't want to waste the paint, I'll pour it in here. And it's come out to like almost like a pearlized, like grayish blue color. So I'll probably utilize some of this color. I have some surface primer black here. I have a uh, gunmetal paint here, which I'll probably use for a lot of it. We have some iridescent uh, blue and then we have some pearlized blue. And then uh, I have some other colors here and there. I'll probably get in there uh, and use uh, maybe some washing of colors. I don't know. We're just going to run with it and have fun. Uh, I don't want to make it look super shiny. Only underneath I want to make it look shiny. The top I want to give it like a more of a shiny satin look I guess. So we're just going to keep running with it. Now the one thing though about this rock that you have to consider when you're working on it is I can't paint it just like this and add the sparks because actually the rock is more of uh, like this. She's sitting in on like that. So I have to consider when I'm ready to do all the sparks that it's going in this direction, not this direction or this. So you got to kind of think about that down the line. And because I don't have like a proper setup here, uh, I might have to actually turn it and do it a different way. Or I might have to just hold it with my hand and let the paint get on my hand and just, it'll, you know, it's not, it's a rock. It doesn't matter if it's messy. Uh, it's one of those things where I tell people, sometimes you don't need to overthink the stuff. Just run with it and have fun and do what you want to do. It's a rock. You can always paint it over and keep going at it. It's not like, you know, anything special where it's, you know, all these different colors on the figure and everything. So, just something not to overthink, kick on some music and just have some fun. So with that being said, uh, let's get this done. So uh, we're going to start doing the reds now and I want to start building the red up slowly. I don't want to do a harsh hard red underneath of it. I want to make it look like a hot rock. So I have some uh, Tamaya transparency red here, clear red. I have some iridescent red from Garage Kits. We have some red ink and we also have some interference red as well. So I want to just kind of start blending it up and making it look like it's warm and hot underneath from friction than to do like a harsh red. So I might do an opaque red near the end, but not really. I want to keep it more transparent and then uh, slowly kind of build up around to here where it's getting a little bit more red. And then we start doing the yellows on there to make it look like that friction sitting over here. So over here, it's going to be sort of like just kind of warm. And then we go to there. Uh, probably gonna have to hold it in my hand. I might even have the rock turned upside down. Uh, it's gonna look like why are you handling this with your hand? But like I said, it's a rock. You can get away with handling it and then hitting it with more colors and making it look messy. It's just uh, the fun part of this uh, doing this type of project. So uh, worst case scenario, I do have the whole opening over here that I did for the key of the figure. I could always turn it under and put a rod under there and hold it up too if I needed to. But it's okay. It's just a matter of uh, just letting it run and have some fun with it.
All right, so uh, we did all the red. Uh, we got it making it look, it's looking hot now. You can kind of see how underneath it's kind of really red and as you turn it, it we got the top. Uh, you can see around there. Uh, a lot of the reflection in there is the pearls, the uh, interference, the iridescence are kind of hitting it around. So you can kind of see how we're looking. So the rock is going to be like positioned like that. So you can see how the blending is going on it. Hopefully in the camera. So the next step is doing the yellow. Now, the artwork actually shows like sparks coming out of behind the rock like it's actually colliding or something. And we don't have sparks on there. We're not creating any sparks. So we got to kind of like do it with a little bit of the paint but not go overboard. So this is the was it Malatau uh, liquid chrome. A friend got me hooked on this stuff. Uh, he found this stuff on uh, Facebook groups, statue groups. It's kind of like a uh, liquid chrome ink. Uh, it's a really cool stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's almost like Alclad Chrome or AK Interactive Chrome, but it's more of like an ink. And uh, basically, you still need a smooth surface. The only problem is if you try to gloss coat it or anything, it will dull down. And it really is not like uh, you know like a professional like type of chrome, but it's good for small areas. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to probably put it in through the airbrush and sort of mist in a little bit of the chrome. Just hit it and see if it starts to like shine. If I start to get some really cool reflective stuff, I have this Alclad lacquer clear uh, that we can clear it. Now you can clear this stuff. Uh, and you can uh, use like this type of stuff to clear it and you can keep that chromeness. The only thing is though, if you're trying to chrome something really super smooth and make sure there's no imperfection whatsoever, it, I found that it sometimes it, it, it cracks the stuff, it gets reactions and it doesn't really work. But with something like a rock like this, you can get away with it because it'll work no problem. And you can just uh, pretty much, it doesn't matter if some of it's cracking or whatever because it kind of bleeds into the rock and it makes it look cool. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So uh, I'm going to let this dry up a little bit more. I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer too because I want to make sure all the paint's kind of cured up before we do anything. And then we'll hit a little bit of chrome in the areas here and there. We'll hit it with the yellow and we'll see how that kind of creates like a uh, sort of reflective type of uh, spark. And uh, hopefully it should work out. All right, I got it to where I want it. Uh, if I go a little too overboard in this section here, it starts to turn too yellow and I lose it. But if you look at it in this direction, you'll definitely see more of the hotness and sparks and a little bit more over here as well. And especially when you turn underneath, you see a lot more of it. So you can see how it's kind of where we're going with it. So uh, what I'm gonna do is let this cure up for the night and then tomorrow what I'm gonna do is a nice gloss coat over it. I'm gonna use the Spaztec uh, gloss coat uh, make it look a little bit shiny so this way it'll kind of feel a little bit more um, like space rocky glowing and stuff uh, right now it's sort of dulled down a little bit but I think once we get a nice gloss coat on there it should come together pretty well so uh, now that that's done I'll finish up the bottom part of the base which is just black and we can attach this piece and then we can start working on the figure
All right, so last night I attached the rock to the base. Uh, what I also did is I did a little bit of a, a little bit of a technique in there with some like uh, spark effect uh, on the bottom of the base. I added some chrome uh, misting in there, some pearls, just to have some fun with the rock, uh, the circle base to make it look pop a little bit more. Uh, what I'm going to do is I got these uh, Tishinami uh, figure art uh, stuff that I, you know, you can buy these uh, kits in. Uh, you know, on eBay, and you can add them to your figures. They're mostly for like action figures, for like powers and boosts. But I had a bunch of these in there from past project, and I'm not really utilizing them. So I didn't actually tell the client I'm doing this. I'm just going to add it in there for the hell of it. Something a little extra to surprise them. So what I'll do is I'll cut those in half, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of glue some sparks in there, like it's actually sparking up a little bit. Just a little bit of fun uh, to the piece. Uh, so the next step, though, is we're going to start working out the trim. Now I have here is a. Uh, titanium gold and then a regular yellow paint so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a lot of trim around the figure uh, any of the blue uh, I'll probably have to do some of the titanium gold first and then the yellow over it just so I don't get that green uh, the symbol is the only thing I'm going to worry about I might have to do the symbol last uh, I might do the yellow trim first around the bottom but I might leave the symbol last because I have to get this arm on there and the arm is sort of touching the area over here so if I have to do some sand work I might actually sand off the symbol so I'm probably going to attach the arm first touch up all the blue and then do the symbol last but at least I could do all the yellow first on everything else so it's just a little bit of messing around so but just adding her uh, onto the rock now I could kind of see what it's looking like if I needed to change any colors but I think we're looking pretty good. So I'll get those uh, sparks added to the base and we'll start uh, getting up all the yellow trim. I don't know if I'll be able to film a lot of it because it's just tedious work sitting there painting it. So hopefully we'll come back when we're ready to finish up the symbol, attach everything, and then do the hair. Alright, so we got all the yellow done, we got the belt done, we got the under the shirt done, we got the yellow up there, we got this, and we got the boots going. I also did gloss up the boots just to make them a little bit different, just to kind of make them pop a little bit more like PVC type boots, stuff like that. So we have a lot of space in here for Aves, and I also have a lot of drummled out area over here for Aves as well. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'll probably put a couple drops around the other area there, and I'll make sure Aves is set up in here. So I want to get this leg attached tonight. Let it cure overnight so this way tomorrow I can focus on the arm and getting that all attached. Uh, I don't want to try to do the leg tomorrow and then it sort of doesn't really set up and then I try to do the arm and it breaks or falls off or you know it's not really cured up. I'd rather do it right now, let it sit overnight, not have to worry about it and then tomorrow it should work out pretty good. So I'm going to get that set up now and then hopefully by tomorrow we can get this at arm attached, uh, cleaned up. And then uh, after that's done, it's just a matter of doing the symbol and then the hair and eyes. Okay, so I uh, got the arm on and it's just messy right now. What's going to happen is it's early in the morning. Uh, I figured let me get this started now. By the end of the day, the arm would be pretty much cured up with the Aves and the glue would be kind of secure too because I put a couple drops of glue there to hold it. What's going to happen is I'm going to let that set up now. Later tonight, what I'll do is I'll come back with my Dremel tool. I'll Dremel out a little bit around there just because there's some probably glue sticking out of it. Uh, and then we'll seam it up with some Aves. And let it cure overnight. And then uh, tomorrow morning I could wake up. I can sand it down. We could touch up the blue. Get it all nice and flush and seamed up. And then we can start focusing on the symbol and the hair. But there is one thing that I found out last night that I ran into. When you put the figure on the base now that this leg is attached. This left foot is stopping her from going down flush. And I kind of figured that was going to happen. Because this is one of those kits where you got to kind of build it and paint it at the same time. You can't really just kind of 
paint it all in pieces and then just put it together or be able to paint it in one shot only because that leg was separated. But now that everything's together, all I really have to do is kind of drum out this left foot on the rock area. I'll probably put some A's down with some baby powder, put it on, and then uh, just have that flushed up. So as long as the body goes back down to the base flush, we should be pretty good. So those are the two things I got to do. So I'm going to go into the garage now. I'll drum out the rock, we'll throw some baby powder down, make sure everything's looking good. Um, with something like that, if you really wanted to, you can wrap some saran wrap around the bottom of the foot just so it doesn't uh, get any kind of residue or stuff on the foot. But since it's the bottom of the foot, I'm not really that worried. So what I'll do is I'll put some A's down, some baby powder, press it down, make sure everything's looking good and just let it sit for the day. And then uh, tonight we'll come back and uh, seam it all up. Okay, so I masked off all the areas here, and it's a good thing I didn't do the symbol because I did get a little bit over there, and I'm probably going to do a little overspray. So I actually have this Tamiya Chrome Silver. I'm going to do a light layer of chrome around the area here just to make sure that I didn't mess anything because even though I have a special paint mixture that I use for this blue, that stuff sort of takes like a day or two to dry before you can sand it because if I do it on there now and I find an error and I try to sand it down, I start ripping up the paint. This stuff dries really fast and it acts almost as a primer sometimes. Plus it kind of, with the reflection of the light on the chrome silver, I could find an area that might be messed up. I could do a little bit of putty work and I could sand it and buff it down. So it might look really messy now, but what I did is I sanded it down then I used my 3M sandpaper, and then I used a really, really fine sandpaper, and I kind of polished it up so it looks a little bit shiny, but it is fairly smooth. So I just want to make sure that there's no other errors before I do the final blue paint, and then after that, it's just a matter of doing the symbol. Alright, so uh, what I did right here is after the yellow on the S, uh, I just pretty much hand painted the red because trying to mask it off this small would have been a nightmare. Plus, I'm really worried about trying to snap anything off by handling her. So, what I'm going to do now is going to mask around the S and I'm going to do a mixture of some gloss and satin together of the mecha varnish. Give it a like, sort of like a satin gloss varnish over the S, kind of help blend it together. Let that dry up and then we're going to do the hair. So, what I did for the hair is I just did like a just a little bit of a trim around the hair right now, just yellow. It's going to be like kind of like a more of a platinum blonde. We're not going to go full yellow. I just threw some color there for now. Uh, and then after that's all said and done, we're going to put the ID decals on and then she'll be ready to go.
the last couple steps, uh, I'm going to add in the eye decals because I'm just not really good at painting eyes. I like to use the eye decals because it just makes everything uniformed. Uh, so we're going to add some nice light blue eyes to her. She's looking up and to the right, so we're going to kind of follow that. And then uh, after that's done and it's all sealed up, I'm going to install the cape. And we'll come back when we're in the photo studio as the final result. Uh, I'm going to do this off camera because I just got to get in close and make sure everything's working out pretty good. And then the cape is a little bit tedious. I got to do that too, just gluing it in and making sure it's all lined up. But other than that, that's pretty much almost at the end. So uh, we'll be back in the photo studio. All right, so we're in the photo studio. And I'm just going to show you guys that putting in the cape actually worked out a little bit better than expected. You don't really have to set this up where we have to glue it in because I did a test on it and basically the best way to do this is you kind of put it in at this angle first I'm trying to so you kind of just push this in and you pull the piece around and you push this piece in so by doing that and just bending the cape where you want it it works out pretty cool so let me uh, set up a little bit backwards and we'll show the whole thing in a 360. Alright, so here she is, all finished up. Uh, I really had a lot of fun working on this. Uh, I, like I said, uh, when I first uh, got into the hobby back in the day and I was really doing a lot of kits and stuff, I really never had a chance to work on one of these. I did want to buy one back then, but it just didn't work out. I was supposed to paint up for somebody, that didn't work out, but it's kind of cool that it came back into my lap after all these time and I got to kind of redo it. So, uh, you know, just goes to show you, if you see a kit out there or an old beat up kit on eBay or somebody selling it, or even if it's a pre-painted statue, you know, if you're willing to take the extra mile, you can bring it back to life. You can add new elements to it. You can convert it. You can, you know, just maybe do a repaint on it. Uh, just kind of have some fun with it. So don't think that an old kit, just because it's beat up or a statue, doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You can really have some fun with the item. So this one comes in three pieces now. So we have the meteor with this base, then we have the figure, and then we have the cape. Because the cape's not glued in now, so that makes life a lot easier. So I told the client, too, I said, you know... We're not going to glue it in, so this way, down the line, if you ever want to do a different cape, or maybe you want to, maybe you know somebody who could do really great fabric work where they can add like a Superman symbol on the back of the cape, you can follow, just pop this one out, follow the pattern, and you can pop in a new cape. I think this, if this was like a one fourth scale statue, I think because the fabric would be so heavy, it probably wouldn't work out with this because this is so small. And the fabric isn't really that heavy. You can see that the wire will actually play with it and have fun. Now, maybe over time, it may start to sag a little bit, but then you got to kind of bend it back up a little bit. But that's kind of like, you know, the, the ups and downs with, like, fabric capes. Um, if it was, like, a 1-4 scale, you would definitely want to use probably a thicker wire than what we used here. Uh, but the wire in this one is actually, like, uh, it's that green wire you use for, um, like, flower pots and, like, gardens and stuff. So it's really strong, so that's pretty cool. So uh, other than that, uh, we'll get a little bit closer though, we'll show uh, all the details and everything. But one of the things that, the, with the design though is, uh, this is more or less for the client. Uh, when you want to pop her out of the base, it's better like to hold the rock here uh, and kind of pop it out like so. So this way you can uh, move it, pack it, ship it, whatever you need to do. And then if you want to put her back in, you just hold the rock and go like so, like that. Because you don't want to push down and then if you put too much pressure on this you could break it from this weak point over here I mean uh, the way I set it up it's never it should never fall it's never gonna go anywhere but it's just that if you put pressure on it then of course that's the downside but I mean you know you have ups and downs with everything out there when you build stuff so let's get a little bit closer we'll show you all the stuff that went down so you can see the hair and we did ultra fine transfer detail eyes on her so I, I'm not really good at painting eyes, I admit that. I, much as I try and practice, I can never get the eyes correct. But with the decals, it's easier just to cut them off the piece, put them in the water, and slide them onto where you need to slide them. And it's just nice and even, and it works out great. So that's what we did with that. So the reason why we went with the platinum blonde hair is because we didn't want to fight all the yellow on her outfit. So that's kind of a little bit lighter yellow on that, and it worked out pretty cool. So all the extra detailing with the hair, as you can see, just made it pop a little bit more. It gives a little bit more full of life to her. As you can see all that. Rock looks pretty good with the spark now. Well the meteor. Rock, meteor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, her skin tone is a little bit uh, more uh, bronze than what I normally paint up. But I think that kind of works out better for 
this character on like kind of in like space because the sun is and the artwork is coming from this direction so she does have a lot of shadow on the body and the artwork like that so I thought you know you kind of play with it a little bit and have some fun so it just makes her uh looks a little bit cool so just something different having fun a little bit tricky you know with the arm and the leg uh just once you get past putting the leg on it with the arm over here that's probably like the hardest part of the whole kit I would say but just adding little extra details of building up the skirt you know uh redoing the little yellow around there adding the rock and all that stuff so that's pretty much the Supergirl item Hughes kit for Back to Life. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, let me know if you uh, like the paint up, the build. Maybe it gives you guys some uh, pointers if you have any old kits or you're looking for an old kit. And you want to say, okay, you know what, I want to redo that and just have some fun with it. So other than that, uh, it's pretty much all done. Going to pack her up, get her out the door soon. And hopefully you guys like the series. So thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.